Okay, in this video, we are going to find the areas of these two shady regions. And remember, the area of a polar curve is the integral going from theta 1 to theta 2, 1 half r squared d theta. And we will also have to do some geometry, and we also have to pay attention to the angles. And the angles are the hardest parts, right? So here we go. This part right here, of course, we can see that we will have to just find the quarter circle in the red part, and then minus the blue portion, right? So let me just indicate this right here for you guys. Suppose I have just this picture right here. And this is just a quarter circle, so if you don't want to use integral, it's totally fine. But we will, we will, why not? And we have to subtract the blue one. So for the blue one, it's just like this, right? They do intercept right here when theta is equal to zero. That's good. Okay, so what can we do? Well, again, for this one, seriously, no integration needed. But I will still do the integral, right? So here we go. This right here is the integral. Well, we go from here, which is theta being zero, right? This direction, theta is zero. So theta is zero. And this right here is pi over two. Nothing tricky, because this curve does not cross the origin at all. So nothing tricky at all. Zero and pi over two, that's all. And now we can use that, which is going to be one half, and the r is just one. And you square that, and then you have the d theta. Congratulations, we are done. Minus the other part. This part is a tricky part, so pay close attention to this. Well, well, this right here, the function is r being cosine theta minus sine theta. Let me tell you, if theta is equal to 0, cosine 0 is 1, sine 0 is 0. So this point right here is theta 1 being 0. That's great. So we still have the integral going from 0. That's great. However, we have to find out for what angle will the curve hit the origin. This right here is not pi over 2, right? Pay close attention to this. This right here is not pi over 2 for theta. What we need to do is, because we are at the origin, we have to make the r equals 0. So we will just have to do that. And let me just put that down right here for you guys. So again, for the origin, well, you can also call this to be the pole. That's why it's called the polar equations, the polar functions. We have to set the r to be 0. So we get 0 is equal to cosine theta minus sine theta. And of course, we have to work this out real quick. Bring the sine theta to the other side. So we have sine theta equals cosine theta. Divide the cosine theta on both sides. We get tangent theta equals 1. And now you just have to remember, theta of tangent of what thing go will give us 1. Well, we have a lot of answers. The first answer is going to be pi over 4, right? Pi over 4. And then the next answer is going to be 5 pi over 4. And of course, a lot, a lot more. But you see that when theta is equal to pi over 4, this is the first time that the curve hit the origin. Right, because when we have this angle, the r will be 0 for the first time. So in fact, it's actually at pi over 4. If you plug in pi over 4 into thetas here, we will end the r is equal to 0. We will be right here. So you also have to pay attention to your starting and also your end. Because our starting is at 0 right here, we have to look for the first time that the r is 0. So this is the theta 1. This is the theta 2. And now we can just go ahead and put down the formula, one half parentheses with this being the r, then the cosine theta minus sine theta. Don't forget you square that, and d theta. And guess what? I'm not going to work out integral. You guys will just do whatever you guys would like. You can do this by hand, or you can use a calculator. And I will you know, leave that to you, OK? It's just like you do it. Okay. Don't write this down on the test, OK? If you write this down, automatically zero. You have to actually do it and then put down the answer right here for me, OK? Anyway, let's look at the second one. OK, for this one, hmm, it's different, huh? We have to go from here like that, the blue part, and then minus the red part. So I will just put this down right here for you guys. Area is equal to 
we have to look at the blue part, which is like this. Right, so this is not really like a quarter circle, right? This is the blue part's not a quarter circle at all, okay? It's not a quarter circle at all. So just keep that in mind. My picture is not great, but you guys can see the better picture in the thumbnails. So this is, has nothing to do with quarter circle. So we have to do this part and we have to minus the red part. The red part is a quarter circle, so that's very nice. Why? Because the origin is at zero and the radius is one. So that's good. And now let's see, this is the quarter circle. I forgot to color the regions. <laughs> so we have this, and earlier we have all that. So just do some geometry and all that. Okay, here we go. If you would like, you can do the easy one first. From 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, done, fine. Okay, but this one, let's face the reality. We have to do the hard part. If you would like, you can make some progress by putting down the 1 half, and you square the r, which is that, cosine theta minus sine theta, and you square that, d theta. Done. But without the limits of integration, I don't know. Okay, here is the deal. Perhaps one of the biggest common mistakes is the following. Of course, you guys can see, earlier we went from here to here, so you can see the orientation. It goes this way. So we had to start right here. We had to figure out for what angle will the curve hit this right here, right? So that will be theta 1. But this right here, it's actually not 3 pi over 2. This right here, it's actually not 3 pi over 2. OK. This right here is a troublesome. When you are on the y-axis, let me tell you, whenever we have the point on the y-axis besides the origin, it's either you get pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. Keep that in mind. The best way is that just plug in to check. Right? So let me just do that for you guys real quick. If our angle is at pi over 2, we will end up with r equals cosine of pi over 2 minus sine of pi over 2. Isn't it? And now check this out. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and we have minus sine of pi over 2 is 1. So in another word, r is equal to negative 1. The truth is that for this point, well, angle is pi over 2, so we are looking up this way. But because r is negative 1, so we have to go down one unit. So the coordinate for this point is, you write down the r first, which is negative 1, and you put down the theta, which is pi over 2. And in fact, this is the first angle that will give you this point on this curve, pi over 2. So keep in mind, whenever you are on the y-axis, the theta is either pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2. But you have to be careful. Sometimes the r might be negative. So even though you're looking down this way, huh? but it's actually pi over 2 because the r is negative 1. Any point on the y-axis besides the origin, of course. Origin is always going to be when r is equal to 0. So you have to do that. So theta 1 is pi over 2. So let me just put this down right here for you guys. This is why I did the graph by hand with my students in class. Right? That's why you can feel about how to graph all these things much better. And now, similarly, we have to figure out for what angle will give us this point. Even though we're looking at this direction, but it's not zero. This right here, the theta is not zero because we started at pi over 2 as our theta 1. This point, this number here, has to be bigger than pi over 2. Okay, keep that in mind. Well, similarly, this point is on the x-axis, so theta is either going to be 0 or pi. Of course, you have a lot more, like 3 pi, 4 pi, and so on, 2 pi, all that. Don't worry, either 0 or pi. That will be the things you should use first. And because we have pi over 2 already, you can kind of guess that this is actually pi, because this number for the theta has to be bigger than pi over 2. I will put on pi right here for you guys first. It's actually the answer. It's pi. Why? Because, let me tell you, if you put in theta 2 to be pi, you put down pi over 2, I mean pi right here. Let me just erase this real quick. 
when theta is pi, you put on pi here and pi here. Cosine of pi is negative 1. And then sine of pi is 0. So yes, again, we end up with r equals negative 1. So the angle is pi, which we are looking at that direction. So we're looking at this direction. But r is negative 1, so you go back one unit. So we hit this. In another word, this coordinate is negative 1, comma pi. It's on the x-axis. Okay? So from pi over 2, the next theta for you, which is going to be pi. You don't do 2 pi, you don't do pi, whatever. Okay? That's the idea. So that's it. And then you pretty much do this. Minus integral. For this right here, it's not that bad at all because r is always 1. Right? This right here, r is always 1. So it's not thing tricky at all. If you look down, this is just 3 pi over 2. Because there's no way for r to be negative. r is positive 1 already. So you have to look down pi over 2 direction and then go forward one unit to reach this point. And then when you have this, you don't put on 0 because you have 3, over, you have three pi over 2 already. You have to put down 2 pi. This is 0. This is also 2 pi. This is also 4 pi and so on. Right? And you are going forward. So you have to put down 2 pi for this. And of course, you put down 1 half. r is 1, and you square that, d theta. And again, the answer to this right here is you do it. Huh? You do it. Yeah. I will be surprised if my students really write down you do it on the test. I will take a picture of that student's test, and I'll share with my subscribers. So if you're my students, seriously, just don't do that. And if you are taking Cal 2 with other professors, seriously, don't do this to your professors. Seriously, just work this out on your own. My goal was to show you guys how to find the theta values to find the areas for the polar curves, right? Hopefully, you guys all find this video to be helpful. Give me a like if you think so. Thank you guys so much.